Hey guys, welcome back to Dexter Ranch. In today's video, we're gonna be installing some Ritchie Auto Waters out in the barnyard for the cows. For the past couple years, I've been using this setup right here. And all this is is a heated water hose coming from the house and it's just not a great system to have the water running from my house. It's not a very permanent system, but it did get me through uh, my first year and a half, two years here at Dexter Ranch. And I do have a video on all of the parts uh, needed to set this up if you're looking for a quick solution to get you going. Uh, I'll link that video below. I dug up way too much of the yard to start with uh, to find the water line because I didn't know exactly how they were getting over to the house with it uh, but it started heading back towards the fence mind you the house is over there and then it just kind of curves around is what it looks like all the way around the driveway is how they went I'm gonna go ahead and just patch into it right here and I'm gonna just run out kind of curve around and head out in front of the barn, which is where my pins are gonna be. I wanted to talk quickly about the units that I bought and just point out a few things. Uh, this, this is the Ritchie Omni Fount 2. A couple things to point out on here is one, you can see there's an empty slot coming out of the access panel here. That's because they don't provide you a plug. So that's something that you'll need to buy extra is a plug. It's real easy to wire up though. You just got your green ground, your black hot, and your white neutral wire. So real easy, just uh, wire a plug on there. Not a big deal. And then as we get going, you'll see a ground rod coming out of the ground. And what that's for is a number six copper wire goes from that ground rod to this clamp right here. And that grounds the entire unit. So just wanted to point out those couple of things about the unit. Um, also, they do not supply the stainless steel bolts that uh, are used to anchor the water down so you'll have to buy those extra as well and this this is the would be the access panel that you would use after it's installed right here if you needed to get in there and work on anything i got the cover off of the access panel but uh, this is how would, how you would get in there after it was installed. Uh, a lot of different people make, or a lot of different companies rather make these waters. And uh, I'm not sponsored or, or do I work with Richie. I just did my research and uh, from my research, I found that uh, they look like they were the best one. So... We'll see. I have a lot of rock in my property out here. And uh, that's the reason why I'm using a backhoe instead of a trencher, because a trencher just doesn't tend to work out. Uh, we used a trencher when we ran power to this shop right here. And uh, it was quite the ordeal. So I'm gonna use the backhoe. It's gonna make the trench quite a bit wider than what I need it to be. Hey, that's just what you got to do when you have giant rocks all through your ground. So uh, let's go get started on the trenching. Our trench is done for the most part. Might have a few more things to just clear out by hand because uh, we've had some weather. Spent the better part of yesterday pumping this trench out with uh, a little small pump that I have. 
and got most of the water out of it so I can continue on today. But uh, there was a change in plans because I thought that the water line to the house curved around the driveway. Well, I was wrong. The water line for the house is right there. So as I started to dig this trench from the electric pole there for an electric line to go out, uh, first couple scoops, I broke my main water line for the house and uh, ended up having to patch it up really quick so I didn't get a chance to film any of that. But uh, So the plan now is basically that whole part of the trench over there was dug for no reason because there's really no reason to run the water line from all the way over there if I can just run it from right here. So what I've done is I went ahead and teed off of the house's water line and then inside that four inch PVC there, there's a, a valve for a shutoff. And then now I'm going to start running my water line out to the barn. This would be the recommended uh, pipe to use on a job like this. A one inch CPL potable water, 250 PSI uh, poly line is what it is. You could go down to a 160 PSI pretty easily and not have any problems. The reason why I'm using this little bit thicker, you can see there, it's got a pretty thick wall is, is because of all of the rock that's in my ground. I just feel like uh, I want it to be a little bit better protected. But if I had just nice clean soil, then I, I wouldn't have a problem using the, the 160. This stuff doesn't cost too much more than the, the thinner stuff. So it just made sense. They don't make a good way to get from the PVC line, or at least not one that I'm aware of, to get from regular PVC to the poly line. So this is the method that I'm going to be using and what I found through my research is that I put a, a female thread coupler on the end after my valve there and then I'll, I'll put some uh, tape or, or pipe dope on here and thread this in to these threads and then of course my poly line will uh, slide over the barbs here with a hose clamp on it. So that's going to be my next step. From here, we're going to uh, come over towards the barn and have a <clears throat> hydrant right here. The cattle pins are going to be on this side of the barn. So right here, we'll have a hydrant that'll go through that four inch PVC. I'll fill that up with some gravel just to give it a little bit more insulation. And then another valve, um, just in case anything happens out at the waters, uh, we could shut this valve off here and still have access to water here at the hydrant. All of the plumbing is complete for both of our water locations. We're gonna have one right here and another right here. Now there's going to be a 16 foot alley right in the center of the barn here. So we'll have a fence here and a fence here. These waters are going to end up about four feet inside both of those fences. So all of this plumbing is complete. I left these pipes quite a bit long until I get my concrete pad in where the waters will be bolted to. And then I can make the final cuts on those, our hydrant over here that we had talked about before 
is all installed and plumbed up and our shutoff valve for after the hydrant is all ready to go. At this point in the project, I made a decision that I just didn't want any rocks at all to go back in to the trench. I didn't want them on top of my water line. I didn't want them on top of my electrical line. And, and plus, if I ever want to dig something back up, if I have a problem down the road, I just don't want them in my way. So uh, it was one of those points in a project where you realize that you didn't realize how difficult something was going to be or how long it was going to take you. Because I found that the only way to get it done was by hand. You can't just pull up to these rocks and, and get a bucket full of them because you're knocking them back in the trench or you're taking all the dirt away and I need the dirt. Uh, the grapple didn't work out so it just it was two and a half weeks actually that, that this took me just moving rock after work uh, and on the weekends. But here I am finally starting to get my separated clean dirt back into the trench. Uh, over the water line. The trench has been filled in about halfway. Now we've got our three clean piles of dirt that we separated from the rock. And now we're ready to start running some electrical wire from the panel over to the barn and from the barn out to the water locations. So that's next. For a power supply for our waters, what I'm doing is I'm installing a new GFCI outlet out here on my electrical pole. And I'm feeding that off of my outdoor panel here. I've got a 20 amp breaker in here. It's a 20 amp GFCI outlet. And from there, I'm gonna come out of this, this bottom knockout of this box to feed out to the barn and feed, feed this line that we've already laid in the trench. And this is a a 10 gauge wire here a little bit bigger than your typical 12 that you would see on interior installation but running through the trench here and then we come around with that and go under the barn foundation and we're coming in here to a junction box so this is just going to be real simple. Uh, so, so this is our larger 10-2 wire. And we are going to hook that power source up to our two 12-2 wires that are going to run out back out to our waters. And then for future use, we got three more knockouts here that we can hook into to try to get some lights and a couple outlets out here in the barn later on. You can run quite a bit off of 20 amps, so I, I think this is gonna work out, but as you can see here, I've tried to go along and wire tie my wires together where they're running together. I want to be sure that I'm keeping a drawing of where all this stuff lays in the trench. And it, it's going to be important for me to know plus or minus a foot where it's at because I'm going to have fencing running through here. So that's where we're at. I still have to uh, get everything connected and get my cover on this. And then I'm on to... Uh, getting some PVC at the end of each one of those wires with an elbow going up to ground level for the outlets that will be installed at both of the water locations. We got one of the locations ready to do the final fill on the trench. And I figured I would go ahead and show 
what we got before I filled everything in so you guys could see everything at the water location right before it got filled in. So this is what they call a thermal tube. This has a 12 inch outside diameter and an eight inch inside diameter with the insulation R value of 14. And this is just to insulate the water pipe as it gets closer to ground level. And obviously we have our outlet there. I have my grinder hooked up to it just to test it. And I'm also gonna need to use the grinder to cut off this ground rod as I pounded it in as far as it'll go. And it's, it's gonna be a little bit tall. So I'm gonna have to cut a little bit off of that. And then the two by four obviously won't be there, but what I'm using the two by four for right now is the bottom of the two by four is showing me where my grade level is. And what I'm shooting for is the top of this thermal tube roughly ending up at the top of my concrete pad. Now I'm gonna use these two by fours for my form for my concrete pad. So what I've done is I've left myself about an inch above where I believe the top of the concrete pad will be. And that way I can build things up and have the ability to still control uh, making sure that this thermal tube ends up pretty close to where the top of the concrete pad is going to be. My pad is going to be a four by four foot pad. And so this whole area will be backfilled up to ground level with gravel. Uh, just to keep it a little bit more compact and stable for the concrete to set on. So that's where I'm at. I'm gonna move on to our other location over there and get it identical to this one. And then I will start finally filling everything back in and getting this trench gone. After getting the rock level across the ground here, we got about a quarter inch reveal from the top of the tube to where our theoretical top of our concrete is going to be. But I would imagine by the time I get my forms leveled up, that will be just about right. Guys, if you want to know if you got your concrete mixed up well enough, if you're doing it with a shovel, it's uh, whenever your thumb looks like that, then it's the it's mixed good enough at that point.
this black fitting right here is included with the Richie water. This is our ground wire here. Uh, should be using a green wire for this, but I don't have any green wire this size. This black hose that's going to connect our water source here to the water is also included in the package along with two hose clamps, one for each end. This rubber seal is also included. And this is just to keep air from going underneath. The last step that we'll do after we get it bolted down is add a, a silicone caulking all the way around the edge to keep water from going underneath the water. Alright guys, everything's hooked up. Uh, last thing to do is just cross your fingers and open the valve. Make sure no leaks down here. Rolling up here. I don't have it plugged in right now as far as the plug-in that we we wired up on there. Uh, I'll just I'll come out here and do it when it starts getting cold. I just don't see a reason to have it plugged in right now, but I don't know if I got the float set just right or not. Looks like they got a line on here. I wonder if that's where they're telling you to set the set it to where the water comes up to that level probably so but if you want to adjust the water level all you got to do is loosen this wing nut right here and then just pull the float up a little bit and it'll bring the water level up but everything appears to be working Sounds like the valve finally shut off. All right, let's get some cows over here to test it out. Well guys, that'll do it for this project. If you liked the video, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Dexter Ranch for more videos like this. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.